You've got your sling and you're ready to lift. But first, you need to make sure you're taking careful consideration in regards to the angle of your sling. What sling angle is best for the lift? Who should have the final sign off before we start lifting? What should I do when using a basket hitch? In this video, we are going to address those questions so that you can be confident that you're getting the most out of your lift, measuring the sling angle correctly, and keeping up with the safety standards. Stick around to the end of this video for a presentation on Mazala's sling working load limit chart. Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. My name is Kay, and today we are going to dive into everything about sling angles so that you can be confident the next time you're ready to lift a load. We sat down with lifting specialist Nate Fisher to answer our questions. The sling angle, or horizontal angle, is the angle where the sling meets the load. And you need to measure that to find out how you can properly choose the piece of rigging that you need for the applied force that's going to be on them. So we want to check and make sure that that sling angle is good to go. And really in our industry, we want to make sure that that's at least above 30 degrees. We like 60 degree angles in our industry, okay? When we tag a multi-leg sling, we are tagging it for 60 degrees. There can be other 45 or 30 degree working loads on there, but for the most part, 60 degrees is gonna be the basic sling angle that we wanna work with in any field, whether it be industrial, manufacturing, construction, anything. If you measure in between your pick points and you've got the same distance going back up to your crane hook or common point, you have a 60 degree angle and you're good to go. So most of the time in dealing with construction or even in you know large manufacturing and industrial outfits, Headroom is not an issue. So just get the proper sling length that you need and you'll be good to go. But there are situations where you know that's not possible and you have to do some measuring and some calculating. There are plenty of resources out there to be able to find that angle you know, quickly and easily. So the sling angle is going to affect the tension and stress that is put on each sling leg. So for example, if you have a 2,000 pound load and you're picking it up with two legs of sling, you have to divide the weight of the load over those two sling legs, each seeing 1,000 pounds. But when you're at an angle, and say a 60 degree angle, you have to use a multiplier to get that tension. So that multiplier for a 60 degree angle, you're gonna multiply it by 1.155. Now, if you were to take those slings down and have a 45 degree angle, you're gonna multiply each sling leg, that thousand pounds, by 1.414. And if you took it down to a 30 degree angle, that horizontal angle on each side with two sling legs, we talked about each sling leg seeing a thousand pounds of the 2,000 pound load, well you have to multiply it by two if you take it down to a 30 degree angle. There are instances where a designated person is overseeing a certain lift or, or pick. Now, in that case, that designated person needs to be the one to approve that lift and say that it's good to go. And that really normally starts with a critical lift plan and maybe a meeting before anything gets picked up. So generally, that's where a designated person comes into play. But for the most part, out in the construction industry or out on the shop floor, when a company deems somebody competent and qualified, it is gonna be that person's responsibility to make sure that they understand sling angles, they know the sling angle of the load that they're lifting, and be able to make that lift properly. Ultimately, it's the crane operator's decision to perform or not perform the lift. Any time that you have a competent, qualified person working out there in the field, lifting loads, 30 degrees is going to be the minimum that they should be allowed to lift a load at. After that, there should be a critical lift plan involved or some, even some kind of engineered backing or, or de designated qualified person understanding that, okay, we're about to make a lift that's below 30 degrees. 
let's make sure 100% that we've got the proper slings and everything in place to do this safely. In ASME B30.9, they say that anybody that's lifting loads below 30 degrees needs to have a qualified person or a critical lift plan approve that lift before it's done. And might I just say too, that if you're gonna be lifting a load below 30 degrees, there is other options out there to be able to make that lift safely. You may need to introduce a spreader beam into the situation that spreads the load out to be able to then come down in a proper fashion to be able to make that pick a whole lot better than having to go below 30 degrees. Whether you're using mechanical chain or welded chain, it doesn't matter. They're go both gonna perform in, in the exact fashion that they are laid out in their working load limits. And if you have a 3 8 chain with a, a hook on one end that is mechanical and a 3 8 chain with a hook on one end that is welded, either way, they're both gonna perform the same. That multiplier of 1.141 or one, you know, 1.155 for a 60 degree, it's all gonna be the same for chain, wire rope, synthetic, all that. There are sling angles involved in a choker hitch. So often people don't realize that. They just think a choker hitch is a choker hitch and whatever the working load limit on this sling says for a choker hitch is good to go, is good to go. However, when you have a proper choker hitch, say around a piece of pipe going back up to a crane hook, that is actually a choker hitch at 135 degree angle. Now, when you start to take that angle and decrease it by pulling it back away from the eye that it went through, you're starting to introduce sling angle into your choker hitch and you have to derate that choker hitch. And it'll go from 135, 120, 90 on down, but you need to take into account that you're adding force onto that choker hitch when you're taking down that angle. We need to make sure that we refer back to our materials on how that choker hitch is derated. And it's gonna depend on the type of material that we're using, from a wire rope sling to a nylon flat web sling or round sling. They are different for different types of materials. When we're talking about a basket hitch, we need to make sure we're talking about a true vertical basket hitch. And that means that we've got distance in between the load that we pick up to make sure that our D to D ratios are correct. But at the same token too, those sling legs that are going back up need to be going straight up in order to have that true vertical basket hitch like we have tagged on your sling. Now, if they go around a load and then come back up to a common point, you're introducing sling angle in. So we gotta make sure that we understand that whatever our vertical basket hitch is rated for, when it's at an angle coming back up to a common point, we need to derate that vertical basket hitch to make sure we take into account the added stress from the sling angle. Let's take a look at Mazella's sling working load limits chart. We've separated the chart out into different types of slings with each separate chart showing different sling diameters, part numbers, sling type, or chain size. From there, the chart shows the sling angle and how much the sling can lift from that given angle. Reading a load chart like this for different types of slings is pretty straightforward. However, you want to make notice when looking at a basket hitch. You want to make sure that you understand that the true vertical basket hitch, say for a quarter inch wire rope sling, is 1.3 tons. Now if we were to take one sling and put it over a crane hook and have an inverted basket at a 60 degree angle, you'll see that it's good for 1.1 tons. Now so often we get the question, what if we were to take two slings up to a common point? Would that mean it's still a true vertical basket hitch rather than one sling inverted over a crane hook? And the answer is no. With two slings or one sling in an inverted basket, it's still going to be at 1.1 tons at a 60 degree angle. To download our sling working load limit chart as a pocket guide or a poster, check the link in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Once again, my name is Kay and I'll see you later.